Hi, and welcome to the WIRED webinar for the Center of Continuing and Online Learning. In the webinar, we will cover the following topics. The e-confirmation letter, e-portal, and your learning management system, Blackboard. Here's an example of an e-confirmation letter. An e-confirmation letter will be emailed to you one business day after you have registered to the email that we have on file. The confirmation letter contains key dates, important contacts, textbook information, and, more importantly, the ePortal website, your username, and password. If you're not able to locate your e-confirmation letter, try to do a search in your inbox for Welcome to Online Learning. Check your junk mail. And if you're still not able to locate your e-confirmation letter, contact Chris Benson, our resource coordinator. Here's an example of the ePortal login. If you go to www.elgonquin.ca, you will be able to enter your username and password to log in to the ePortal. Your username and password, again, is found in the e-confirmation letter that you should have received in your email account. The ePortal contains weekly announcements, college services and other resource contacts. The ePortal also allows you to book in-person exams if you have any. It also contains technical support numbers for learning management systems. Access to your courses. If you're not able to log into the ePortal or you forgot your password, again, you can contact Chris Benson, our resource coordinator. For the purpose of this webinar, I'll ask you to log in to a demo account. Please go to www.elgonquin.ca. In the username, please put in ePortal, and for the password, enter 1234. You can now pause this webinar and start exploring some of the contact information, college resources available to your disposal. I would like to bring to your attention booking your in-person exam. If you live in the Ottawa area, you can book an exam on campus at no cost. These exams will be offered at the Woodruff campus only. Certain dates are available, so please book early because they book up pretty quickly. For those that live outside of the Ottawa area, you must book a proctor, and there will be a cost associated to booking a proctor. Proctors are employees at educational institutions or public libraries. If you are out of Canada, you can also book a proctor at an embassy. Proctor forms are submitted directly via the ePortal for out-of-town final exams. If you have any questions regarding booking your final exams, you can always contact Deanna Jerez, the exam coordinator. Here's an example of your exam list. In the demo account, there is only one course that has a final exam that must be completed in person. You can select the location, which is either the Ottawa Woodruff campus and pick a date. If it's out of town, you will have to select out of town exam and it will prompt you to enter the information for your booked proctor. Now I'd like to bring to your attention accessing your courses. Algonquin College offers two types of courses. Algonquin exclusive courses as well as Ontario Learn courses. You can identify the differences by the course code. Algonquin Exclusive Courses 
include Algonquin College students only. The course code starts with ALG. There is a 24-7 technical support number that you can call if you run into any issues with your Blackboard account. For Ontario Learn courses, these are offered to students from other colleges. You may have students in your course from Niagara College, George Brown College, or Humber College. The course code starts with AL, and they have a different technical support number. So if you run into any issues in your Ontario Learn courses, you can call the number 24-7. Here's an example of a full-time online student who is registered in both Algonquin Exclusive Courses and Ontario Learn Courses. We're now going to move on to the Blackboard Learning Management Systems and how to access Blackboard. Access Blackboard you will click on the course title. But before you do, I would like to discuss some important points, such as the course availability, the end of term course evaluation, and the learning management system. As you can see in this example, the platform being used is Blackboard. If you are registered in an Ontario Learn course, which is hosted potentially by another college. You may be registered in a different platform, such as Desire to Learn or Moodle, which is very similar to the Blackboard learning management system that we will cover today. In terms of course availability, your courses may not be available just yet. They will only become available at start of term. Once they've started, it will show you the course availability and when you will no longer have access to the course. It's important for you to save any documents on your computer or in your email before the course closes. Because once the course closes, you will no longer have access. In the last option or icon indicated as Go, this is for the end of term course evaluation. It is an amazing opportunity to give us feedback on your facilitators, the course content, and your experience at Algonquin College. To access your Blackboard homeroom, you will click on the course link. This will bring you to your Blackboard homepage that contains your courses. So go ahead and click on the course link. You can now pause and explore. I will now go through the demo with you, show you what you can expect in regards to your online learning course or courses. So to access your Blackboard homeroom, you click again on the course title And this will bring you to your homeroom. As you can see, there are several modules available. I personally like to clean up my modules so that I have access to my courses easily. You can move around your modules by hovering over a box and moving it upwards. I like to move my courses up above, my announcements just beside, and I delete items that I don't think I'll be using by clicking on the X button. Some of them will not allow you to delete them, so you can minimize them by clicking on the down arrow. The on-demand help and learning catalog includes videos regarding Blackboard. 
If you wanted to view extra tutorials, you can click on the Quick Tutorials catalog. If you'd like, you can also personalize your page. And this will change the color of your page. As you can see in this demo, the student is registered in three courses. To access each course individually, you will click on the specific title. For today's purpose, we will go and click on Blackboard Orientation. You are now in your course. All of your courses will have the same feel, and most of your courses will have the same menu items. You'll have announcements, contact information, course documents, which will include your course calendar and course outline, course content, which includes your course notes, discussion board, assignments, quizzes, and finally tools, where you can view your grades. Let's start by going through the contact information. By clicking on the contact information, you can access your facilitator's contact info. It's usually an email address only. Our facilitators are professionals or retirees. So they do not work on campus and do not have a telephone number readily available. Please communicate with your facilitators via email or via the discussion board. If you email your facilitator, allow for at least one business day response. If you have not heard back from your facilitator for over three business days, please contact our customer service number at 613-727-4723, extension 3330, and they will properly redirect your call. You can also email at ol at algonquincollege.com. Let's move on to course documents. Your course calendar is the most important tool that you will use throughout your course. You can access it by clicking on the attached file. When you access your course calendar, I highly encourage you to print it out. This will be used throughout your course to manage your time and to view when assignments, tests, or exams are due. As you can see, this is an example from fall 2013. To understand your, your calendar, we will go through each column. So in the first column, there is the week and or date um, that you will be following. In the second column, there is the lesson number and title, which is associated to your lesson content. The course, sorry, the course learning requirements can be associated to the course outline to ensure that you are meeting the learning outcomes. This is what is expected from you each week. The readings, learnings, learning activities, and the assignments. Every week you will have readings to complete, a learning activity to enrich your learning experience, and finally a quiz, a discussion board, or an assignment due. In the first week, which is from September 14th to September 21st, for example, you know that you will have to read chapter one, two, and three from the Human Factors textbook, chapter nine from PEMBOK textbook. The learning activities are in the chapter readings. There's group exercises 
videos, and web link research that can be found in your lesson content. Finally, in this week, you have one quiz that's due on September 28th and a Lesson 2 discussion board, which is also due December 28th. You can work ahead in your calendar, but you cannot work behind. If you work ahead, it is not expected that your facilitator will mark your assignment until after the due date. So, if you know that you are expecting a busy week during week three, you can work ahead and complete the discussion forum due October 5th, way before time. However, a grade will not be submitted to you until after the October 5th due date. Again, very, very important that you remember that you can work ahead, but you cannot work behind. These due dates must be met weekly. If you submit late, Algonquin College has a late policy of 20% per day and zero after five business days. Or sorry, five days. So again, it's 20% per day and zero after five days. Weekends are included. Let's go back to Blackboard. The second document here is your course outline. The course outline outlines the learning outcomes for the course that you are currently completing. You will access this document a lot less often. You can save it on your computer in case you ever decide that you want to exempt this course at another institution, another college or university, for example. A lot of our course outlines are actually from the daytime programs because some of the courses that we offer are exact replicas of the daytime requirements. So if you see in your course outlines uh, in-class assignments or in-class uh, activities, please disregard. Online learning is purely online except for potentially final exams. I'll go back to the calendar for just a moment and scroll down to the bottom because for this class here, there is no in-person final exam. There's actually an assignment case study, which is worth 30% of the mark. Uh, sorry. And then there's also a cumulative final assessment, which is worth 30% of the mark due December 14th or earlier. So in this case, the final is a project base and not an in-person exam. If you are unsure if you have an in-person exam, you can contact your facilitator for more information. Or you can contact the exam coordinator, Deanna Jerez. So again, the course calendar, find it right away as soon as you enter the course. Print it and save it somewhere in your email or your computer for easy access. Your course outline you will use a lot less often, but it's handy to have a copy in case you ever want to exempt your course at another institution. Let's move on to course content. To access the course content, you simply click on the link. It's divided into lessons, and so on your course calendar, you will be notified which lesson you need to complete for each week. There's a small introduction,
a lesson at the glance, lesson content is your notes, which may include fun videos or educational videos to enrich your learning. There are learning activities. And then finally, an assignment. However, it's always important to check your course calendar for the assignment that is due. Assignments are not always posted in the course content. Always check your calendar for the assignment that's due and verify the due date. And finally, at the bottom here is the summary. It is the same style for every course, uh, sorry, for every lesson. So an introduction, lesson at a glance, lesson content, learning activities, assignment, and again, always check your course calendar for due dates. And then finally, a summary. Let's move on now to submitting discussion posts, assignments, or quizzes. The first item is discussion board. In this discussion board, there are two topics. In your course, you may have a discussion forum for every week that you need to complete, depending on what your course calendar says. So to enter a discussion forum, you simply click on the title. In this case, the forum is called, What is Your Passion? As you can see, some students have already posted their passion, and I encourage you to do the same to practice. So to post a discussion forum, or sorry, to post a discussion thread, you click on Create Thread. In the subject, you can put My Passion. And enter your text in the message box. Please encourage students to spell check. Once you've spell check and you're ready to submit, you can click on submit. When you have posted your own message, under the author will be your name. Because we're using all the same user, everyone's post says I'll guest one. And again, when you are posting your own message, you will see your own name here. So you can identify what you've posted. If you're unsure if you've posted a message because there are so many, you can do a search. So you can search by clicking up here on the right hand corner and then you can search your own name to find your post. In my case, I know that I put cooking as my own passion. I'm going to do a search. And it appears my thread. So my passion is online learning and cooking. To return at the bottom, you can click OK. To access each individual thread, you can click on the title here. In this instance, this individual passion is their children. We can go back again by clicking OK. 
If you don't want to click on each one individually, a really neat trick is to click on the top left corner box here to select all and then click on collect. That way you can scroll through all the posts without having to click on each thread individually. When you're ready to go back, you scroll all the way to the bottom and click OK. And that will bring you back to the forum. Once you post something, you're not able to edit it or delete it. You will have to contact your facilitator to delete or edit a post. So please be conscious of what you're posting. Read through it twice and ensure that your post is respectful to your facilitator and to other students. When you're ready to go back to the initial discussion board, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and click OK again. And this will bring you back to your initial post, to your initial, sorry, discussion board. Let's ask, access the second forum, which is week two discussion board topic. In this forum, no one has posted uh, a thread, so we can be the first. So we'll create our own thread. In the form description, it asks that we create a thread or post and reply to a post regarding this week's readings. So I'll put week two readings. And in my post, So again, always spell check, and when you're ready, you can submit. For the purpose of today's demo, I'll view this thread, and to reply, we click on the reply option. Spell check and submit. You have now completed a reply. When you're ready to go back, you click on OK. And to go back to the initial discussion board, you click on OK again. And that's how you post a discussion thread. Let's move on to assignments. To submit assignments, you can click on the assignment title. In this example, other students have submitted assignments. So you can click on submit new assignment as I just did. When you first access your assignments, this is the page that you will see. In this assignment, the possible points are worth 10. And there are instructions for this assignment. So you download the assignment onto your desktop, open and save as assignment one completed, return here to upload the completed assignment. So the assignment instructions or the actual assignment, sorry, are in this document. And so we'll upload the document. And in this assignment, they're asking me what my favorite color is. My favorite color is pink. So I'm going to save as. And you can create yourself 
a folder for each course, or if you're only taking one course, then you can save it in a folder for that one specific course. So we'll close this, and when you're ready to submit, you will browse your computer, find your assignment, click open, and it will attach your assignment. If you've attached the incorrect assignment, you can click on do not attach, and it will remove the assignment. Or you can simply cancel and restart. If you're ready to submit, you click on Submit. It will now generate a preview of your assignment that you've submitted. On the right hand side you can see a timestamp of when it was submitted. And when you're ready to get out, you can click on OK. Let's do assignment two. We click on the title, and here the due date is Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. So we're submitting late. There's possible points of 40, and again, it's similar instructions. So we'll open the assignment document here, download it. Enable editing, and then my favorite animal is polar bear. And I will save as assignment two completed. And I'm going to save that in my document. But like I said before, you can save it anywhere in your computer. You might want to create a folder. And then when you're ready, you can exit. You browse your computer, find your assignment, open it. And when you're ready, submit. Again, you see the preview here of your assignment. The timestamp indicates that it's submitted late because it was due on May 21st, 2014. So Blackboard already recognizes that it's a late submission. Uh, so once you're done, you can click on OK and it will bring you back to your assignment list. If you are not able to submit your assignment on time, it's very important that you contact your facilitator prior to the assignment due date. Uh, extensions can be negotiated with your facilitator if you have medical documentation or other extenuating factors that do not allow you to submit assignments on time. Let's move on to quizzes. To access a quiz, you'll click on the quiz title. And it will give you instructions. In this example, this test can be saved and resumed later, and I've allowed for multiple attempts. However, please note to read the instructions very carefully, because in some instances, you will not be able to save your test, or sorry, save your quiz and resume it later. You will have to complete it in one sitting. The test also allows multiple attempts, and in most cases, you will only have one attempt for a quiz. If for some reason you experience technical difficulties during your quiz and need to uh, get the facilitator to reset your quiz, it's important that you contact technical support as soon as possible. The technical support numbers are available at the start of this presentation. 
When I gave you an example of the difference between Algonquin Exclusive Courses and Ontario Learn Courses. So, in this case, you would contact the Algonquin Exclusive Technical Support Number to notify them that there was a technical difficulties in your quiz and they will create a ticket for you that you can send to your facilitator. Do not delay in contacting the technical support number if you experience any difficulties. Your quizzes can be reset if you're having technical difficulty. So let's begin. Question 1. Where can you find your grades? In Blackboard, you can find your grades under the Tools section. In Question 2, Embinet Technical Support is available 24-7. This is true. Where will you sign in to connect to your Blackboard Learning Management System? Always through the ePortal. When you're ready to submit, you can click on Save and Submit. And it will ask you to confirm. You press OK, and it will bring you to this page where it's time stamped and also the date that you submitted it. When you're ready, you click on OK to go back. And it'll give you your results right away. So, in this instance, we got 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5, 5 out of 5 for a total of 15 out of 15. Again, to go back, you click on OK, and it will bring you back to the original quizzes page. Let's move on to finding your grades. If you click on the tools icon here and click on my grades, You'll be able to view your current grades. As you can see here, for the CCOL orientation quiz, we got 15 out of 15. And it's dated September 4th at 10.30. For assignment 1, we've submitted it. But if you hover over the green exclamation mark, you can see that it needs grading. The facilitator hasn't yet graded your assignment. You can also see that we have submitted the assignment 2, which was due May 21st, 2014, but was submitted late. There is also an exclamation mark showing that it does need grading. And this concludes the Blackboard orientation. Just to recap, we've covered today during this webinar the e-confirmation letter where you can find your username and password for the e-portal. You will access the e-portal to access your Blackboard homeroom which contains your courses. You will also use the e-portal to book in-person exams if you have any and access resources and college services contact information. Under Learning Management System, we've covered Blackboard, where you can find your facilitator's contact information. You can also find your course calendar and course outline, as well as course content and notes. And we've covered how to submit assignments, discussion board posts, and quizzes. so much for viewing the Wired webinar. If you have any questions, you can always contact ol at algonquincollege.com or our customer service number at 613-727-4723, extension 3330. Thank you so much and have a great term.